It's not about the image we take, it's about the image we let others see. I heard this saying a while ago and I really liked it. In this day and age, we all edit our photos somehow. We either work with exposure, contrast, we replace sky or do some, you know, creative blur effect. And that's what we will talk about in today's tutorial, blur effect. We will create this image from this to this. And we'll also take this other example from this to this. What inspired me to do this kind of edit? Well, once in a while, I'll go out and try ICM. If you don't know what ICM is, ICM stands for Intentional Camera Movement. And that is when you go and intentionally you take a blurry photo in camera. That happens by using a low shutter speed, usually around a half a second. And when you take the photo with the half a second, you move the camera as the photo is taking and the shutter is dragging. So there's different techniques to create an um, ICM photo. You can either like turn the camera, do like a little jerky motion. You can go up and down and that's most often seen on woodland uh, photos of ICM. You will see those blurry trees that you can just see the trunks going up and down. You can do side to side and that one we will see it mostly in seascape. And then, you know, you have all kinds of little jerky motions or zoom. You can zoom if you have a zoom lens while you have a long shutter speed and you get some cool effects. Um, I will show you a couple of images I took just a few days ago and I really like them because they're different and just kind of looks like Monet painting. So here is the images I took. Now if you did try ICM then you know that you will go out and take all these blurry photos, you swing your camera left and right and after hundreds and hundreds of photos maybe you are left with one or two that has some sort of visual interest that makes, you know, for a good photo. And uh, Today I'm going to save you all that time. We're not going to go out and swing our cameras around. Maybe we'll do that in a different tutorial. But today we will go in Photoshop and I will show you how to make this creative ICM look like, but we'll do it with a twist. We will have our subject still in focus while our background is nice and blurry. So without further ado, let's go into Photoshop and show you how we do this. We will start with uh, this image over here. This is the easiest out of the two because it does not have a shadow. And then we will work on this image and I will show you how to deal with the shadow. So let's erase all these edits that I did and we can start from the beginning. All right, so this is the image to start with. And the first thing I would like to do is do Command J to duplicate my layer. And now I need to select my subject out of the background. So I'll go to my quick selection tool and select subject. And Photoshop has done a pretty good job, a really good job on selecting my subject. I'm not going to refine this mask. All I will do is go to select, uh, modify, and I'm going to feather this selection by one pixel. Click OK. Great. Now that I have my selection, I'll do Command J to put this uh, lady on her own layer. So now if I turn off the other layers, you see we have the selection on its own layer. Great. Now with the layer underneath it, I have to remove the lady from my image. And for that, I will take my lasso tool and I will loosely, loosely draw around it something like that and now i'll do a shift delete to bring in the fill dialog and i will choose content aware fill click ok and now if i turn off the layer with the person you see it kind of filled it in it's not perfect but it's good enough because remember we will add a blur to it so command d to deselect put the lady back into the frame and now with this background uh, layer selected, not real, the background, the layer one, which is the copy of the background where we remove the person. Now we will go to filter, blur gallery, and we'll use path blur. And when path blur opens up, we have this little line over here with these two dots. And my first line, I want to put it kind of where the horizon is. So I'll put one dot there and one dot there, something like that. 
and then over here we have how much blur we want to add and that is under the speed right now it's at 50 but i want to put it somewhere around 125 130 i'll go with 131 for this one now to create a little bit more interesting of a blur i will add a few more lines and you see my um cursor turned into this little pin so i can just point where to start and then let's see our point where to end and then if you click again it would let go of this line and now i can move it and create little bending lines so we'll do one like that one like here i can click in here i can click in here and i can click in here and now we're creating all these different kind of waves so it's not just straight up and down Maybe this one just goes straight up and down this way. And maybe we'll add something in here too. Something like that. There you go. And once we are done adding our lines, we just click on the top over here. OK. And it's processing. And there you go, we have a more creative photo. Now I would like to color grade this, and for that I will use the NBP color maps. Um, if you do not know about this plugin, it's the plugin I use pretty much in almost every photo to color grade. And I have a whole video dedicated to this explaining how it works with lots of examples. So go find that one and watch it. It's really, really good plugin. So I will go to some, let's see, maybe I'll do this kind of color toning. So I'll just click on these three dots and apply color grading. And what this does is uh, it's applying a color map, a gradient map. So you see this over here is just a gradient map with some colors that I chose from a different photo. So let's see our image, what we started with. Let me close this plugin. So we started with this image and we ended up with this image before and after and i really like this effect i think it's just more fun and creative i would totally put something like this on my wall but that's just me let's move into the different example this one and this one it's a little bit more complicated because it does have a shadow so i am going to erase this edits that i did and we'll start from the beginning so just like before i will start with command j to duplicate my layer i will go to quick selection mask and select the subject great photoshop did an okay job not perfect so this time i will just alter a little bit of the selection I'll click select and mask and now I can further edit my selection. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm not selecting the shadows this time, just the person. All right, that's not bad. And now I will take this refined brush and just loosely kind of run it around the person. Something like that. It's not perfect, but you get the point. And then I will put it on its own layer with layer mask and click OK. Great. So now the ha we have the person on its own layer. Now we will go to the layer underneath and we have to remove the person. Command 0 to fit the screen. I will take my lasso tool. And just like before, I will just draw around the person. I will take the shadow in it too. Just like that, shift, delete, content aware fill, click OK. And 
and that did the job. Command D to deselect and you can see if I turn off the layer with the person, we have the background with no person. Now we'll go to background just like before, we go to filter, blur galleries and path blur. And this time it's fun because we have a few waves in here so we get some curvy parts. So I will put this on the horizon. I always like to start with my horizon, something like that. I'll increase the speed to, let's see, for this image, maybe 127, we'll go with that. And then we'll create some more ones. I'm gonna go kind of follow this wave over here. Another one. Oops. Maybe this one over here. One more this way. Maybe something like that. And then maybe something like that. And that looks good to me. Now that we have this blur, let's see. I will click OK. And now we have to work on our shadow. Great. Now we have our blur and we get to work on our shadow. I'll turn off the top two layers and I'll go to my background. And with the lasso tool, I will just select my shadow. Just loosely, something like that. And with my shadow selected, I will go to select, modify, and I will feather this by, let's say 20 pixels. Click OK. And now Command J to put it on its lone layer. And I'll move this to the very top. I'll turn on my layers now, and you see we have our shadow here. And now with this shadow layer selected, I will go to filter, and this time I'll go to blur and motion blur. And, and to the motion blur, you see we have this little wheel. We can choose the direction we want the blur to go and we want to kind of match it with the other blur in the scene so it kind of blends. And then you get to choose the distance and pex pixels. And the more you move this to the right, the more blurry it gets. The more you move it to the left, the less blurry it gets. You wanna choose something that we kind of blends in with the rest of the image. You don't want to get it more blurry than the rest or less blurry. Something like that looks good for this image. And click OK. Now I see my selection of the person was not that great around here, the foot. So we can work on that by going our mask. I'll get a B for the brush. I'll make the brush hardness about 80%. And now with the brush, I will paint on the mask, make my brush smaller. And we can paint with white to reveal. And then X to toggle between the white and black. And this time we hide with the black to kind of work on our mask and make it a better selection. And my selection was not that great everywhere, but you can go around and kind of tidy it up, make it look better. Something like that. Let's see, Command Zero to fit to screen. And now you see our um, blurred shadow it's a little bit too far from the person so we can go to our image and command t to transform it and we can move it up a little bit and then if it's a little bit too wide too blurry we can click on it and add a layer mask and then with b for the brush soft brush with a hundred percent hard or zero percent hardness now we can paint on our 
mask and just kind of modify that shadow the way we think it's going to look the most realistic something you know i'll do something like that so let's see the image what we started with and what we ended up with this is our before this is the after before and after the blur on here is too much i went over the person's foot so i can bring that back and let's see again before and after and now into the fun part is the color grading part i will use the nbp again and since this is a blue image with seascape i will choose a blue color grading click on the three dots apply color grading and that looks better and then i don't want to lose my sunset color so i will also apply an orange color grading let's see find something more orange i will go with this one apply it and that it looks great it's a little bit maybe too dark so i will just pull it down just a little bit and now this is our image before and after before and after let me group these two color grading layers i'll select them both to command the g and this is the color grading before and after before and after it gives a lot more rich color you get the idea play with your own images create some cool art and that's it in today's lesson thank you so much for watching my name is Skylar Ewing and I will see you in my next video